new session of Parliament opens on Wednesday. We'll have details to this story and more in the National Report. the details to the news for Tuesday, August 30th, 2022, I am Chrisanne Mitchell. The ceremonial state opening of the first session of the 11th Parliament of Grenada will take place on Wednesday. As is the tradition, Governor General Dame Cecile Lagrenade will outline government's plans and policies for the further development of the country. The ceremonial state opening will be guided by the theme, Transformative Development Towards a Sustainable, Equitable and Prosperous Grenada. It will be the first stint in Parliament for Grenada's new Prime Minister, Honorable Deacon Mitchell. The opening will be broadcast live on the Government Information Service from 9.45 a.m. Government's commitment to pay more than $3 million in outstanding fees and increases to employees at the T.A. Marshall Community College has brought an end to an impasse which saw lecturers, administrative officials, and other workers holding placards at the entrance of the campus. Education Minister Senator the Honorable David Andrew on Tuesday explained that the ministry has made significant strides in addressing the issue after meeting with union leaders leaders and staff at the institution. Minister Andrew told members of the media during the government's post-cabinet press briefing that government has established a council to assist in reaching common ground. We now have a council in place and in fact council has convened its meeting, its inaugural meeting, the first meeting, uh, Friday gone and the, the results have been extremely encouraging. So to date, um, council is in place. We have had a resolution passed by council. In essence, uh, staff and the, the unions agreeing to return to work and end the impasse upon government's commitment, which we have already made, to, to pay the close to $3.185 million uh, towards the payment of outstanding fees and increases. Now, there are outstanding arrears, back payment, and there are increases. And so that has to be leveraged against both. Now, when all is put together, it's um, a significant figure, but we are willing to advance that much. And the unions have agreed that they are prepared to accept this while we deal with some of the other more protracted, long-standing issues. Government is currently assessing the amount due in retroactive payments and how it can be paid in the not-too-distant future. Even while the payment is outstanding, some workers have resumed work to bring the operations at the institution back to normal with the new school year soon to begin. There are one or two other things um, related to a commitment from government as to a timeline for the payment of the retroactive sections. We'll be quite happy to do that once we have verified figures as to what those are, and then we can determine a timeline for payment even in tranches. But given where we were, I'm quite happy to report that. Let me say too that the decision has been taken to have registration commenced on Monday, September 5th, which is a one week delay. But given all that has been happening, we are satisfied that we are heading in the right direction and services will resume as per usual. So we have some further steps to go, but as relates to TAMCC, I'm satisfied. The council has brought a very conciliatory atmosphere, and we know we have some more work to do, but we're in a good place with, TAM with TAMCC. Dr. Wendy Grenade will chair the new council, which consists of union leaders and Ministry of Education officials. As chair of the council, uh, Dr. Wendy Grenade, uh, 
as deputy chair, Mr. Larry Barry. We have principal, Dr. Roland Branton. We have the chief education officer, Mrs. Angela Finlay. We have the representatives of both unions, the, the GOT, Mr. Jude Bartholomew, and Mr. Brian Grimes of the Public Workers Union. We have Ms. Althea Dowden for the Chamber of Industry and Commerce. We have Mr. Devon George representing the agricultural sector. We have Ms. Samantha Purcell representing principals of second, the Secondary Schools Principals Association. We have Mr. Joshua Andel, who is a student representative, uh, the president of the Students' Council. We have Mr. Jason Williams representing the Association of Professional Engineers. And we have Mr. Walter Simmons, Simmons Dr. Walter Simmons, um, the tourism um, representative. The ministries of education, ICT, and social development have to date processed and approved over 9,000 applications for the government's uniform assistance program. Vouchers for pre-primary and secondary schools have already been printed and will be disseminated during the week. Following the general election on June 23rd, the government made the decision to move the program from the Prime Minister's Ministry to the Ministry of Education through the principals to ensure equity in the process. Acting Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Education, Finley Jeffrey, says vouchers for primary school students will be disseminated in time for the beginning of the new school term on Monday. There was also the Ministry of Social Development involved because we have to remember that there are seed applicants and so on. So that list was sent so to so they could add, um, subtract as, as, as they see fit. And then it was moved to the office of the Prime Minister. Now, I must say that the entire process was not taken and sent to Ministry of Education. This will happen later down the road. But for this year, um, because um, PMO already has the institutional knowledge, already has the machinery, and of course the budget, <laughs> the, the line item for this. So it was left there to, to operationalize and to, to print um, the vouchers. The primary school vouchers, most of them are already printed. Um, the, the finishing touches will be added today. And then we have some other residual um, applications that, that um, will also be entertained today. So this is where we are. At the moment, we can say tentatively that we have um, just around 9,000 applica applications. P.S. Jeffrey explained that in 2023, government will revert to the incorporation of ICT to make the process paperless, as was implemented under the previous administration. In going forward, we are looking to employ um, a greater de degree of ICT to this, to this process. Um, gone should be the days when we are printing, actually printing physical vouchers. Um, a program was um, started last year, and we will continue with this so that um, parents can have vouchers um, via QR codes on their phones and so on. So this is something that we can look forward to in collaboration with ICT as we try to make the process much better. This is the National Report. The news will continue after the break. Prepare for hurricane. Prepare for hurricane. Make sure you have your radio and your batteries to waterproof flashlight candles. We'll do kin stuff, garbage bag, birthday kit. Come on, people, make sure you have it. Clean water in a container and a hurricane plan. Hear me, no man. Hurricane damage is beyond your control. Surviving the aftermath is up to you. Have a hurricane plan. It can save your life and your family, too. Prepare for hurricane. Your hair, prepare for hurricane. 
Cabinet has overturned the prohibition for students interested in pursuing law and medical degrees at the University of the West Indies to access economic cost assistance. Education Minister Senator the Honorable David Andrew says the support is accessible to prospective and current students who will be on site at the UE campuses. He says the prohibition, which has been in place since 2014, will no longer be effective. I am particularly happy to declare that in, in our previous cabinet sitting, there was a conclusion to overturn the long-standing um, prohibition of students pursuing medicine and law from accessing economic cost. So we have now changed that and reverted to all students going to the University of the West Indies, overseas campuses, accessing um, the economic cost. We've had several students feeling deprived and denied of that opportunity simply because of the program of choice. And the reality is, though, that because of the uh, arrangement that participating member states have with the University of the West Indies, there is a fee that we pay anyway to the university. And so there's no real uh, reason to deprive our citizens from enjoying economic cost when there is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's a $3 million um, fee that's paid, I probably can't be corrected, mm -hmm. to the University of the West Indies yeah. uh, annually um, because we're supporting territories to the university. So all of our students should, in fact, as many as possible, be encouraged to benefit from that because it's part of the agreement. So there's no real reason, in my opinion, to debar anybody except you feel that program is detrimental. And um, I don't see how that's likely to happen quite easily. Minister Andrew also told members of the media on Tuesday that government has approved over 40 scholarships for students to complete studies at the University of the West Indies at the master's and bachelor's levels. The cabinet did approve a listing of, I, I'm subject to correction, but close to um, 16 or 17 uh, awards for the master's level and close to 42 at the bachelor's level. Um, and that was recently uh, approved by the cabinet. So for those of you who did apply, uh, feel comfortable that you, and you met the criteria, that you have been successful. He says payments will be made directly to the prospective institutions under the government's tuition assistance program. Payments will be made shortly to the University of the West Indies and the St. George's University on behalf of the applicants. We are pleased to report that the persons who have applied, having gone to UE or to SGU, wanting the tuition assistance for those institutions, those funds would be paid directly to the school. So don't expect any individual check, but those would be paid directly to the school. And in the case of the University of the West Indies and the St. George's University, I'm informed from the Prime Minister's ministry that those have already been applied. We are still in the process of finalizing those for um, TAM CC because we have received for them as well, but be informed that those payments will be applied directly to, to, the, to the colleges. The Ministry of Youth, Sports and Culture on Tuesday handed over a check of 140,000 EC dollars to the Grenada Football Association to support student athletes desirous of pursuing studies in the United States. This presentation was made through the National Lotteries Authority. Minister with Responsibility for Youth, Sports and Culture, Ron Redhead, says government is happy that NLA came forward to assist the students to further their knowledge in football, which speaks volumes to the level of support they can and continue to give. We believe that we must enhance the potential of our athletes to a great extent so that they in turn can turn around and um, be productive citizens in addition to their areas of uh, discipline in the sporting world. Bernadine Andrew, General Secretary of the Grenada Football Association, says its young people will benefit from the funding. This is the first time for the Grenada Football Association that we have eight young people moving to the U.S. to pursue their studies, higher education. And we believe in the holistic development of our young people, so we are extremely happy 
that we have been able to partner with the National Lottery Authority. And of course, we must say a big thank you to the government of Grenada, who um, reached out to the National Lotteries on our behalf to be able to assist the students. We know what, what education does. We know education can open many doors. So we are extremely happy that we have been able, with football, using football as a vehicle, to get the students out there. Amilcar George, Marketing and Business Development Assistant of NLE, says the National Lotteries Authority is pleased to respond to this cause and will continue to assist in activities that will see the advancement of youth, sports and culture in Grenada. We are pleased to help student athletes to, well, you know, lift their progress, their progress in terms of education and help them to gain a, a bigger advantage on the world and place Grenada in a better place, both sporting, both, both through sports and academics. That story brings us to the end of the National Report for today, Tuesday, 30th, August 2022. On behalf of the entire news and production team here at the Government Information Service, I'm Kristen Mitchell saying thank you for joining us. Thank you.